What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Konos Crash Course. We're here with week 27 of History, the West, and we're kicking off with the Homestead Act, which Congress passed in 1862, and it was approved by Abraham Lincoln during his presidency. And it motivated settlers to move out west because it allowed people to live on 160 acres of land, and then they could live on that land for the course of five years, and at the end of those five years, gain ownership of the land. There was a $10 filing fee to get the 160 acres, which is around $300 in modern currency. So it was extremely cheap, and the only real requirement was that you had to be the head of a family, and you had to be 21 years or older. But there were no gender or race restrictions on this ownership, so women and minorities could also gain ownership of land. It was extremely popular and led to settlement of an estimated 10% of U.S. land. Around this time, also motivated by the move out west, was the Transcontinental Railroad, which was completed in 1869 and stretched from the west coast to the east coast, connecting the entire United States. It was built mainly on Chinese immigrant labor, which would come into play later, and grew tourism and settlement in the west. And around this time, mining was also on the rise. Comstock Lode was a silver mining deposit in Nevada that led to a boomtown of Virginia City being erected around it. And the mining started in the 1850s, but by the 1880s, the mines had been completely deprived of all silver, leading to Comstock becoming a ghost town. And in response to the events at Comstock Lode, Congress passed the General Mining Act, which allowed people to claim federal land and mine it if they found minerals on that land. And this led to a lot of tension between Native Americans and migrants who were hoping to mine because the migrants would find minerals on Native American land and try to seize it. And so in response to this tension, Congress passed the Chinese Exclusion Act, which was the first immigration bill passed by the United States based on nationality and it prevented all immigration from China. It was extremely controversial, especially since Chinese immigrants had done a lot of the work on the Transcontinental Railroad, as I mentioned. But around this time, ranching also exploded in popularity after the Civil War. The first cowboys were Hispanic and African American, uh, contrary to typical depictions. But free grazing, which is the way that a lot of ranching was done before the Civil War, was uh, limited by Western settlement, which led to cows being put in more fenced-in pastures and being bred to eat grain as opposed to an endless supply of grass. But with this move out West and with so many different enterprises becoming more popular, there was a lot of dramatization of the Wild West, which led to Wild West shows, the most popular of which was run by Buffalo Bill. But these gave dramatized reenactments of Western events and really glamorized the Western lifestyle and motivated even more people to want to move out West, which had a negative impact on the Western tribes, also known as the Plains Indians. They were negatively impacted by all the Western settlers because a lot of these settlers were trying to seize their land. And this led to the Buffalo Wars, which were efforts to control and restrict the Western tribes by eliminating their food source of buffalo. Buffalo was like the main thing that these Native Americans were hunting. So the army hunted and decimated the buffalo population. By the time they were done with their efforts, it's estimated only about 100 wild buffalo were left. And buffalo were made a protected species by the end of this by conservationists who were rightly concerned about so many buffalo being killed off. But following the Buffalo Wars and their mostly successful efforts, they were followed up by the Indian Appropriation Act in 1871, which was where the federal government legally no longer recognized the Native American tribes as independent nations. And the significance of this was that it invalidated all the previous treaties the U.S. had with Native Americans, allowing settlers to take Native land because there were no treaties restricting such actions. This led to Native pushback, which culminated a lot in the Battle of Little Bighorn, was the main Native American victory. It was a battle between the army and Native American tribes led by Sitting Bull. 
General Custer led the U.S. troops, but his entire division was killed by Native Americans. And it was the best and unfortunately last Native American victory within this conflict. It was followed up by the Grant Peace Policy passed by President Ulysses S. Grant. And this was an effort to kind of make peace with the Native Americans and it focused on assimilating the native tribes and it allowed forced boarding schools for native children. Really the focus of it was to incorporate Native Americans into American society, but they wanted to do that by forcing the Native Americans to give up everything about their culture and their customs and their religion and their ways in exchange of just becoming like any other American citizen. In response to this, the ghost dance religious movement started among the Western tribes. It was a pacifist movement, and the goal was for, through this religious movement, the Native Americans to drive out the settlers. But again, it was pacifist, but the United States government did not acknowledge that pacifist nature and sent the U.S. government and the U.S. military in to fight against this religious movement which led to the events at Wounded Knee in 1890, where the United States government massacred Native Americans in South Dakota on Wounded Knee Hill. The government was trying to arrest Sitting Bull because while he wasn't part of the ghost dance movement, a lot of his followers were, and a shootout ensued, and Sitting Bull and nine of his followers were killed. And this led to the United States disarming the natives because they claimed that if the Native Americans hadn't had weapons in the first place, then these events never would have happened. And as the waves of anti-Native American uh, sentiment were rising, the Dawes Act was passed in 1887, which allowed the federal government to divide and sell Native American land. Now, the claim was that they were going to sell a lot of this land back to Native Americans, but the requirements in order to purchase the land by Native Americans was that they had to be fully assimilated. So they had to conform entirely to American culture if they wanted to purchase their land back. This also was simultaneously paralleled by the conservation movement, which was a push for the government to preserve the United States' natural beauty, because as Western settlement was going on, and as Native American land was being parceled out, there was a concern about a lot of the natural beauty of the United States being devastated, which led to, in 1872, the establishment of Yellowstone as the first national park in the United States. It would be followed by a lot more national parks, which we'll see more when we get to Teddy Roosevelt. But that's it for this week of history. All right, hope this helps you guys with the quiz, and see you later.